So my day was all about what? Peter, John, and James. Okay, Peter, John, and James, sons of thunder. Okay, and I said, God, what are you saying then to me about Peter, James, and John if you tell me that we must talk about them tonight? And uh, I felt I was looking to the, the character traits and what were certain dimensions that they had in their lives. I think with Peter, it's easy for you to remember. And uh, the word Peter, the name Peter means rock. Hey? Eh? And in, we see in Matthew 16, verse 16 to 18, please write that down. Go and look into these things and uh, see what God is showing you. This is not just to have a, a little bit of a talk tonight. Amen. We take it as impartation and may we grow through it. Matthew 16, verse 16 to 18, who do you say I am? And when I look at... Peter, the, the words that came to me, that we need a word knowledge, a knowledge of the word as a revelation. Everybody say revelation. Revelation to be the foundation. Revelation to be the foundation of the church to be built. He's going to build his church on the rock, and that is the a revelation of that becomes the foundation. So you can have the word, but it will not be the foundation. The, that what is alive in you, that what is living in you, that what is, if there's this anger living in me, that is the revelation, and on my anger I will build a house. If this issue is alive in me, the issue will be the foundation, not the revelation of who God is. Even though I can know the Bible from the beginning to the end, the word that is alive in me, that is the foundation for my life. Bitterness or opinion or depression or negativity or lust or whatever. That what is giving you that kick, that thing that makes you alive, that thing that <sighs> he zers me up, you know. Why? There's some freaky foundation in there. Yeah. Matthew 16, verse 16 to 18. Who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God, Peter said. Blessed are you, Peter, Simon. Blessed are you, for flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father in heaven. Blessed means happy, 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 fortunate to be envied. Happy, fortunate to be envied when you receive revelation from the Father. That's what Jesus is saying. When you know how to receive revelation from the Father, you are so blessed. That's what Jesus is saying to Peter. And may God help us that we will understand this word in the context of, Father, what are you saying to me? Open this up for me. Father, you gave Christ the Son of the living God, and that is the living Word. The Word became flesh and dwell among us. Amen. The living Word, Jesus Christ. The Word under the anointing of God. Anointing, the anointed one, Christ. Amen. The living Word under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Wow. The Son and the anointing, the Holy Spirit. Revelation from the Father given. You are blessed. That's what Jesus is saying. You are blessed. If you can live by that, you are blessed. You have foundations for your life. You have foundations. And if you understand how to make that thing that is coming to you and you want to give it authority by giving that attention to it, to put, in your, to put your emotions, to put your... Focus in it. You give that thing authority to come in and say, be part of the foundation of my life. Be part of the foundation of my life. No, I cannot allow that. Your life is too precious. How can you do that? No, you cannot do that. You cannot build an excellent palace 
in some other pig stall, mud with a lot of from the pig. True? Now, why will we try and do that? No, 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 no. Let, the, let us get the foundation straight. You with me? You got that word? Word for knowledge as revelation to be the foundation of the church to be built. Because he will build his church in and through your life. Amen. Or you will build it based on some other revelation thing living in you. You will build some other thing. But it will not be his church. It will not be his church. You will build something and the enemy is excited about what you're building because sometime it's going to fall in. You can have the most excellent palace that you build, but if you build it on sand, he's waiting for the right moment to bring the storm so that this wild, fantastic palace of your life can just fall in and what you build can be the same, the thing that crushes in on those around you that you love. May God have mercy on us. May God have mercy on us. Amen. When we look at this Peter, we say, with every man, every woman, there's a unique calling that God has for you. There's a very unique calling. This man was always, what he uttered, there was a lot of foundational things coming through. When we are in the wrong, we can put God into that what we want to build. So nobody will kill you, Jesus, over my dead body because Jesus must fit in my vision. And in this foundation, he will set us free from this oppression from the Roman Empire because this kingdom of this world will become the kingdom of our God in Christ Jesus. Jesus is here to set us free. Nobody will kill him. I will give my life, but he will not die. But for that, Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. When you are having a passion for foundations to be laid accurately in people, you must be able to take it when even God would say, get behind me, get behind me, Satan. Certain foundations can be so intensely dangerous. The storm is not the danger, but the foundation is the danger. Because if you build inaccurate the thing's going to fall. But the storm is going to be a testimony of the foundation. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Mr. Peter, he's in this building business. So, he's excited about Jesus on the mountain. And there's Moses, there's Elijah, Moses, the law and the prophets. The Bible is talking about the law and the prophets. The law showed forth through Moses. The prophets showed forth through Elijah, yo, Lord, let us build three huts. He's in the building business, so let's build the three huts. Out of excitement, you would want to build certain things with your life. It wasn't from the devil, but it wasn't God. Are you with me? And you can build your huts, and God is long gone. He's not there anymore. And you are building something with your life, but God is not in it anymore. Make sure you understand how to build accurately with your life. Amen? Are you with me? But we see this man, Peter. We see that on the day of Pentecost, what happened? He was the guy. Jesus said, on that revelation in you, Peter, I will build my church. Not in you as a person, but on the revelation inside of you. And he's the man. That day, he stood up and said, be quiet. Listen to me. And Peter said, listen. Hey, this is the man who denied Christ just this other day. Just so by the way. But at that moment, under the guidance of the Spirit, through the blood, forgiveness. Hello? Father, be living in him. Stands up and says, this is according to the prophet Joel. What happened here? This is what God has said. <clears throat> That's foundational. That's foundations. So what you see here is not like some would say, no, that crazy man, they are drunk. This one, that, that one, that. What on earth is happening here? What's happening here in this chaos? And Peter comes and lays foundation. Psh, this is what's happening here. In the last days, I will pour out of my from my spirit on all flesh. Son and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see. The old men will dream. 
even on my bond slaves, blah, 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 bond servants, you know the whole scripture, I believe. What is it saying? Old men dream dreams. No, 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 no. Old men must see the global picture. That's where wisdom comes in. Wisdom gives you a global picture. Wisdom must give you a global picture. Young men, see the vision. You must be able to go for it. Don't think the global picture must, is holding you back. No, but there must be synergy in the context of global picture. Old men, vision. Young men, children can just bring forth exactly what is from God. They will prophesy. They will just speak what God is speaking. That is the dimension that God has for us when we are building accurately generational, generational impact. Amen. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Then once again, let's be there. When it's time, when God re- wants the Jew, uh, the, the, the Gentiles to come into the kingdom. He uses who? Mr. Peter. The man with a calling about foundations. So, there, praying, here comes down the tablecloth with all the piggish things to eat. And God said, eat. He said, no. I'm standing with what I believe, what was said. And he said no to God. And then second time, God told him again, eat. And he said, no, I'm standing with Moses. Moses said, he didn't say, I'm standing with Moses. He said to God, but Moses said, as if God didn't know what Moses said. (laughs) And as if God going to submit to what Moses said. (laughs) Hello? But there was this thing that had to change in Peter. And so many times without us knowing We are saying no to God based on how we have certain perspectives in the word, based on how we see certain foundational things from the word. And actually, we are are saying no to God. There's thoughts in us where God wants to challenge us. Challenge us. That is, it was good for yesterday not to eat that pig. It was good for yesterday not to do all those certain things. But for today, it's a new day. So what is the new day that God is bringing in you? According to that, you need to live. Amen? Otherwise, there will always be this fighting about truth and not truth, what is right, what is wrong. Allow God to challenge you. If you are open, that He and the revelation of who He is, is your foundation. Then allow Him to challenge certain things that you believe. That yesterday, it was okay. Today, it is not anymore okay. And after that, and the whole revelation of that, Peter could go back to the apostles in Jerusalem, and they had this this discussion, and he told them what happened, and at the end of the day, certain foundational principles for the New Testament church, for all the Gentiles that will come to Christ, for all the nations that will come to Christ, foundations were laid. Mr. Peter, based on the revelation in you, Peter, I will build my church. That's part of your calling, and you are blessed. You are blessed. You will be so happy, so fortunate, so to be envied, if you understand. Our Father will reveal the word to you. I pray, and I believe, and I hope that you will have such an urge that when you look into the word, say, Father, reveal yourself to me. Reveal this word. Reveal this, your son under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let it be so in Jesus' name. That is that. A key verse, last one, 1 Peter 2 verse 9. It says what? Who's going to read it for us? Must I read it? Can you go there on your phones? Like that or something like that. 1 Peter, let me have it quoted. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a special, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. And then we also see their pastors, 
in this fall. You also, verse 5, like living stones being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You are chosen people, a royal priesthood, so you will be built in. Forever you will reign with God as kings and priests. But understand how you are a kingdom of priests. Understand how you must be built in. Let's talk about building church again, Peter. And he put this revelation down for us. How you as a living stone must be able to give yourself. But living stone, it says, be built in. It's a command. But living stone is not, I understand what God wants of me. One of me, one of me and, and I, I jump as a living stone and go along, hop, and I'm part of the wall. No, no, no. Somebody need to take your life and put it there. You understand? The stone is not hopping along and jumping into the wall. But God will use apostolic leadership. God will use people that you will allow to, for them to touch you and take you and to be built into a specific spiritual family. Not because they are the best, but because God decided that you are part of that one. That's it. Because there's a certain destiny for you. It's not how much do you get out of it. It's not takeaways. It's not drive through. It's not supposed to be. And if I don't like the food anymore, I go to the other one. <sighs> that's rolling stones that's not living stones <laughs> no are you with me? living stone because Holy Spirit is in you but with Holy Spirit in you Holy Spirit in you temple of the Holy Spirit Tem because you're a temple of the Holy Spirit and he's in you therefore you are a living stone but he didn't make you a temple of the Holy Spirit just to stay a living stone but with all together he wants to build he wants to build a home. Jesus wants to build his church. Church means his ecclesia. Called out from the rabbis. Called out from the world to be the church. So that the church will become the home of God. So on the one side church. The word church is to be called out of the chamors. Out of the rabbis. Out of the issues. Out of the kingdom of darkness. Into his marvelous light. That's the authority and the drawing power of the church. But in the church, together to do what? To with Christ build a home for Father God. And that is the nations who will fear him. Amen. Building patterns that we see with Peter. Hallelujah. Holy King, the man James. Part of James, the word, the meaning of the word James has to do with removal, re removing and substitute in the place of. And all of that, I have this word reconciliation. Reconciliation because he took our place. So in that name, there's something about a message of reconciliation. I challenge you again. There's a unique calling that God has for you. You need to find out what is that unique calling. And then you, as a James, you don't need to go to all the people who are also Jameses. All the James click together. No, that's a click. That's not a church. You must be the James where God has called you to be a James. And that is among a Peter and a John and some other guys also. Are you with me? And that's where the church can go wrong. May God help us in Jesus' name. So... We said word knowledge as revelation to be the foundation of the church to be built. Now, here we say word knowledge as reconciliation. That through the word we find the path of reconciliation. We've been given 2 Corinthians 5, the message of reconciliation. We've been given the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciliation is not, I forgive you, you forgive me, wonderful, and bye. Reconciliation, yeah, that is the starting point. I forgive you, you forgive me. But reconciliation is, we come closer to one another, our hearts connecting, I choose to trust you again. And we stand together as brothers, where I will give my life to you, you will give your life to me. 
No. Oh, but you've been reconciled with God. God said, I forgive you, but keep your distance. God said, I forgive you, but keep your distance. Hey? That's reconciliation. Oh, reconciliation has to do with coming closer. So if God has given us the ministry of reconciliation, we're supposed to understand the dynamic of how people and how we're supposed to be able to be reconciled in situations even where we naturally would not necessarily want it to be reconciled. But God says, if you say you love me but you hate your brother, you're a liar. There's no truth in you. No means no, not now. It uh, has to do with something or nothing. There's no truth in you. But if the truth is alive in me, and my love for God is real. But I mean, we are going through the different phases in our lives, definitely. I mean, sometimes Eugene wanted to kill me, man. And uh, me a little bit, him also. But what am I saying? Today we love one another very, very much. All I'm saying with all this, my brother, God wants to sort out our hearts, our lives. And we will always, till we die, be busy with reconciliation with people, with our, even ourselves. If we've been reconciled with God, you need to reconcile yourself here inside with the things, the turmoil, the issues. The sometimes that you feel, how can I forgive myself? Where you feel ashamed about what you've done, you've done here or what you've done there. It's supposed to be in the past. If what? If I respect the blood. You choose to respect what you've done wrong more than what you will respect what Christ has done on the cross. Or you take for your forgiveness. Why? Because you say, I respect the blood of Christ more than what I've done wrong. I forgive you. Because I respect what Christ has done on the cross more than I would respect you in what you've done against me. Or I cannot forgive you because I respect what you've done to me more than what I respect what Christ has done on the cross. Finish. Because there's another type of revelation living in me. God is helping us and he's going to help us. Amen. That we live according to that. Reconciliation to be the opportunity. Reconciliation, my brother, because of reconciliation, there's opportunity. If there were no reconciliation, there's just one thing. Go and burn in hell. That's the only opportunity. But because of reconciliation, there's opportunity through the blood. Amen. Word knowledge as a reconciliation to be the opportunity of the body of Christ. First one, foundation of the church of Christ. Secondly, of the body of Christ. Not to be built, but to function. Now you've written that down. Kieran, you kijk for me so Word knowledge as reconciliation to be the opportunity of the body of Christ to function or to be able to function. You have it. When I understand reconciliation, I will understand the body. I will understand opportunities. I'm not talking about opportunity based on your talent, based on certain skills, based on certain things that you've studied, based on, on certain gifts. There's opportunity that is actually beyond all of that. But that can, it can only come through the body of Christ. Where you can lock into what God has given you. Where what people, generations, they have prayed for. That you can have the benefit of that prayer if you understand how to function as part of the body. You cannot have it if you cannot understand how to lock into the body of Christ in the way God wanted you and wants you to lock into Amen. You are with me for you to function accurately. We see that men in 1 Corinthians 12. We're not going to go into that. But also, in, in, go and look in the book of James. You will see a lot about attitude. We cannot go there. It will take an hour. 
we actually gave a lot of teaching from James. Attitude, faith, works, your words, prayer, all of those facets in the whole context of reconciliation. Are you with me? So reconciliation is not just forgiveness. Forgiveness is, I don't know, 3%, 5% of the, con- the whole concept and context of reconciliation. That is the forgiveness part. That's where you start. Apostle John. Mr. John, the word knowledge as, it was revelation, it was reconciliation, but here as relationship. Word knowledge as a relationship. The, the Greek word for knowledge, genosko, that is talking about a relational knowing. I know Donald Trump, and I know my wife and my kids, but I know my wife and my kids in a different way as what I know Donald Trump. Are you with me? Now, this knowing has to do with uh, talking about relationship. That if the word is alive, I have a relationship. When I, when I take this word, I have a relationship. When I believe the word, I believe a relationship. And I have, and I'm walking in relationship. It is, I will not take it outside the context of relationship. Are you with me? Otherwise, I have a relationship with my pride. I have a relationship with my issue. I have a relationship with my fear, with my... With my uh, uh, inferiority and with that, re- though, that rejection and every word coming to me I, I bring it in in the context of my relationship with rejection my relationship with bitterness my relationship with what to call in, in my flesh you with me? I take the word in that context no, 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 no I take this word in the context of my relationship with Father, Son and Holy Spirit and only in that context, I will take this word in my life. Amen. You with me? Word knowledge as relationship to be the home. Everybody say home. To be the home of the family of God to grow. We have the church of God. We have the body of God, the body of Christ, the family of Christ, the family of God. Are you with me? Relationship to be the home of the family to grow. And God said, that is the new Jerusalem, the place of peace, the habitation of peace. That's where peace dwells. And that is the new Jerusalem. And the new Jerusalem is the nations of the earth. God says, that's my home. I will dwell among them. I will be their God. They will be my people. And I will dwell among them. There will be no sun. I will be the light among them. That's revelation. That's your father's dream, man. That's his dream. And when you understand relationship, and when you come into relationship with him more and more through the word, more and more you will understand your father has really this passionate, passionate dream about the nations that includes you in a very unique way. In a very unique way. Are you with me? So, John, one of the key verses in the Bible, John 3, 16. Hey? For God so loved the world that he gave. For you so love rubbish that you gave your money. For you so love cars that you gave yourself for 20 years of debt to buy the Jaguar. For you so love What? What do you so love that you will give? But that what you love, for that you will give. It's just two sides, one coin. For I so love my country that I and my children and all my friends and my brothers and my father, we will all die in blood because I love my country so much. Um, There's a fine line in, in theology there that Maybe it's another discussion for another day. I don't say anybody must not go, nobody must go to war. I'm just saying there's a very fine line in the New Testament about that one. Very fine line. 
But, yes, yes, there is a day where it's necessary, but you must know that you know that you know what God is saying about that one. Even in the world now, even Armenia, Azerbaijan, and all these other places, may God give us grace to have kingdom perspective about what he wants to do. Amen. Hallelujah. What are we saying? Everything will good, work for the good for those who love him. The devil thinks he's going to win with Armenia and Azerbaijan. He's not. He's going to be so sorry that he tried to bring destruction. Hello? He's going to lose all the way because the church will stand in the name of Christ. Stand and will take the ground. Take the ground for Christ. The one want this ground, the one want to defend the ground, but in, at the end of the day, God's going to take the ground. Amen. Let it be so. Pray that in Jesus' name. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that if we believe in him, we will not perish but have eternal life. So, the essence, relationship, this God driven by himself because he is love for a relationship with us. And then 1 John 3, 16, in this way, we can see what is love in the way that Jesus loved us and gave himself up for us and laid down his life for us. And in the same way, so we need to lay down our lives for one another. Why? Because we love him. You don't lay down your life for somebody else. You're not laying it down for him. And he is laying down his life for her. Why will I not do it? I'm not saying you must go and die for everybody. Jesus did that. Are you with me? That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying, guys, the essence, the essence, the essence in relationship is this giving of yourself. Father gave his son. He gave his heart when he gave his son. The son gave himself for the joy set before him. He went to the cross. And then God said, so you supposed to also lay down your life for the brothers. That's John 3.16 and 1 John 3.16. Please, don't forget those ones. That's in essence in the book John. And through John in the letters that he wrote. So finally, I just want to say, um, it came in my heart just the revelation, book Revelation 12, verse 11. And they have overcome, and they will overcome through the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and that they didn't life, love their lives even unto death. Oh, three facets. What do we see here? James, talking about reconciliation, opportunity for the body to function, reconciliation, that starts with forgiveness. They will, we will overcome through the blood. If there's no forgiveness, if there's no reconciliation with God and people, there is no destiny. There is no destiny. Hello? Are you with me? That's the first point of everything. There's no foundations to be laid if reconciliation and forgiveness doesn't work in you. Because first of all, you will honor the cross and the word of the cross and through the blood you will know who you are is only because of his grace. Therefore, I will only boast in, in nothing else except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 6.14. And I'm crucified with Christ. And the other things are not, not living for me anymore. And the message of the cross is the power of God in me unto salvation. Etc. 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 So, first of all, it's the cross, it's the blood, that's it. You with me? We see that through the message through James. Then, secondly, they will overcome through the blood and the word of their testimony. Word of their testimony. That's the revelation of the foundations in the church. Your testimony must be a revelation from the word. Your testimony must be a revelation from the word. And in essence, Christ must be seen through that. What testimony do you carry today about Christ, not of 30 years ago in your life, but even in what happened last week? 
Our testimony is not how he overcame this and that and that and that and how God supplied and this and this. The testimony is how we stand in the midst of struggle. How we can stand firm while we don't have the breakthrough yet. How we can love him and honor him in spite of our emotions. That's testimony. Every day you have a testimony. Testimony about God, his awesome word, his dealings, his hand on your life. Just see it. Just see it. And don't let the enemy, don't let the people testify or let your flesh testify that you are rubbish or that you don't make it. Or They feel that and they feel that and he's talking down your back and he's saying that and that and I have the testimony, I have the, the facts about that. Okay. If that's your testimony, that's your testimony. There's no victory for you. Not according to the word of God. But if you can live by the testimony from the word of God. Come on, man. Life can be exciting. You can brag about him. You can brag about him. It's not that you must be perfect. Testimony is how you can brag about him in your life. Amen. And lastly, that you didn't love your life even unto death. What did we say? The third one, John. It's about relationship. It's about relationship. You, your relationship with your flesh. Every human being love. He loves his flesh. That's it. So one of the biggest struggles is not to love your flesh. Your biggest enemy is not the devil. It's your flesh that's very close. That in a very natural way, you will just work with it. In a very natural way, it's just a human thing that your flesh is your friend. It's just normal. It's just normal. It's not necessarily normal that you listen to the devil, but it's normal that you obey your flesh. Are you with me? So to deal with it in such a way that I choose, I will not love my flesh. What my fleshly desires and opinions would bring to me. No, 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 no. How will I fight it? I will love my God. I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. I no longer live. This, this world is dead to me and I'm dead to, to the world because there's some dead body. Who was that guy? Uh, no, it was, was it not Heidi Baker there right in the beginning when she gave her life to Christ? The, the devil in a dream came to her. I think it was she. The front door and said, this and this and this and this and this and this. And she said, um, you have the wrong address. You must look in the graveyard. Because that lady died uh, when she gave her life to Christ. Uh, you need to go to the graveyard. graveyard. <laughs> so, so, guys, um, yeah, make sure that you, uh, when those rubbish come, that you say, wrong address, sorry. That rubbish body is not here anymore to be found. Okay, are you with me? We will stay with that. But to do that, it's not I'm fighting first against my flesh. I'm loving my God. I'm loving my God. If you love God, you receive his love. And you love yourself with the right love. And you love your brother and your sister in the right way. It will be so much easier not to love your own selfish life. It will be so much easier for you than to have just the breakthrough. But my brother, my sister, we're on the way. We will not just always have breakthrough. So praise God for grace that we fall into his arms through his blood. That first of all, tomorrow again, tonight again. Oh, God, forgive me for this. I'm growing in you. But I want to respect your blood and I respect the forgiveness that you give me. Through the blood. And then I will walk with my testimony. Hello? And I will not love that life that destroyed me in the past. Through the blood, through the cross, I am protected. Amen. Thank you, God, for who you are. God, come and do this in our lives. God, I pray for every man, every woman here. Lord, that you will help us to understand how to live with foundations that's coming from the word as a revelation. Holy Spirit, take this word in our hearts and make it and bring it to life. 
as we open our hearts to you, Father God, give us the revelation. Father, you want to speak to us. You want to speak to us through the living word. Let it be so. We receive your word. Let it be so in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you help us to lay the right foundations. Thank you, God, that there can be reconciliation, not just forgiveness, Lord, but help us in the ministry of reconciliation to understand, to understand who you are, Jesus Christ, in this and what you've done on the cross. We honor you for that. We thank you for that, Father. And so also, Lord, that we will understand in relationships how love must be the passion and how we will give and surrender our hearts in that. For every form of fear because of hurt, <clears throat> we bind that in the name, name of Jesus Christ and we say, fear you have no hold on the men and the women here in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not control the lives of these people in Jesus' name, but the love, the passion, the energy, the motivation from heaven will control our lives. And that is love. That is love. Thank you for the example, Jesus Christ, Father, Holy Spirit, in surrendering, in giving yourself. So we also do through your grace so that we will not love our lives, fleshly lives, even unto death. You will be our enemy in the name of Jesus Christ, but our flesh will come in line, come in line, come in line with your word so that our flesh will cry out to the living God. We thank you, Father, that you arrest us, arrest our focus in all of that, and you come just and do it in our lives. I pray that you're, you will give the, the guys here, sitting here, dreams and visions, and that you will speak to them in a very unique way as from tonight. As from tonight, it will, there will be new dimensions that will be opened up for many here. Let it be so in Jesus' name as we take hold of your promises, take hold of who you are. Thank you, my God, that you come and you do that in Jesus' name and in that name alone, as everyone said. Amen. 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 Let it be so.